Hey, hey, fourth grade, welcome back. Um, so yesterday we were um, planning our writing for our final project. Today we are going to be looking at day five, which is our drafting and our publishing our final copy for our project, okay? So go ahead and grab that material. You will need this page that says day five. This is the page that includes the rubric that you guys are going to need for your um, first and second draft. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so for today's objective, um, it says today you will prepare and present your project using your notes gathered over the course of the week. So the first thing I want to show you guys, um, this is on the left hand side, you'll see our outline that we used from yesterday that we came up with. And then on the right hand side, you guys will be able to see my first draft. So I've kind of color coordinated so you guys can see um, how I turned the details on the outline into um, complete sentences and I've kind of expanded them. So for the first detail, oh, sorry, the topics, remember the topic sentence and concluding sentence will not change. So that's why they're highlighted in yellow. When you look over at the first draft, they have not changed at all. Those will not change. Um, so let's take a look at our details. So the first one I said, merchants equal overcharging. I turned that into first, we heard that merchants were overcharging for goods. When we look at our second detail, we wrote confronted T. Boylston, and I expanded that by saying, next, we confronted Thomas Boylston about overcharging for coffee. Um, the third detail that you see there in purple, we wrote demanded the key slash T. Boylston in cart. I expanded that into then we demanded that he give us the key. When he did not, I threw him in the cart. And then the last detail that you see there in red, we wrote, unlocked warehouse and I expanded that into finally he gave me the key so that we could unlock his warehouse and get the goods for the rest of the colonists. So here we have our first draft. This is pretty good. We're still um, using the narrative voice. We're still writing as our character that we chose. Remember I chose Deborah Manning. We're still, we have included uh, specific details from the text. We've included transition words. Um, so all of the things that we needed to include are here. However, I know that as fourth grade writers, we can take this first draft and expand it a lot, a lot more. So that's when we need to grab our rubric. So go ahead and grab your rubric. We're gonna take a look at um, things on the rubric and figure out how we can use the rubric to help us make an even better final draft, okay? All right, so on your rubric, there are lots and lots of things um, here to help us expand our writing, make it a lot better. However, for today's video, we're only going to be focusing on four of these um, four of the things from the rubric. I'm gonna choose one thing from each category on the rubric. So for the purpose, we're gonna focus on, I use dialogue, sensory details, and or feelings to show how characters respond. For the next category, elaboration, we're gonna focus on, I showed why characters did what they did by including their thinking. For the third category, organization, we're gonna focus on our use of transition words and phrases, such as just then, suddenly, after a while, and that's just to help the reader understand how much time has gone by in our letter. And then the last uh, category, language and conventions, we're gonna focus on writing sentences that vary in length and structure and using commas just to make them a bit more clear and correct. All right, so let's jump into the first category. I use dialogue, sensory details, and or feelings to show how characters respond. You'll see highlighted in um, yellow, 
in my second draft, you'll see the places where I went back and expanded by using more dialogue, by using more sensory details, just to show how I feel as the main character and how other characters feel. So the first thing I added was, we were outraged, I'm giving you a detail to show how I felt. Um, I also included march down to Mr. Boylston's warehouse and confront him about his unfairness. So instead of just saying we went down to the warehouse, I'm giving you a specific way that we did it. I'm telling you that we marched down there. This is to show you how we have responded to this. Um, I've also included dialogue. We've come for some coffee. This is a direct quote from the text that was spoken by Deborah Manning. So I needed to make sure that I included that. Um, I also said that I became enraged and decided to take him by the neck and throw him in the car. So once again, I'm using very specific um, words to show how I'm feeling. So I want you guys to take a look at what you have on your first draft and see what dialogue you can include if you haven't included any, and also see what sensory de details you can add to show how you, the main character, are feeling as well as other characters in the story. All right, let's move on to the second one. The second category says, I showed why characters did what they did by including their thinking. So I wanted to make sure, because I know that we talked a lot about the things that Deborah and her friends did, but I wanted to make sure that I included why they did it, all right? So I went back and I added, we were outraged at this because we knew that this wasn't fair. So it's showing you why they did what they did. Um, I also added, confront him about his unfairness. So it's showing another reason why um, they went to the warehouse to confront him. The third thing I added was, I could tell that he thought we were joking. So this is another reason why Deborah decided to, you know, take him by the neck and throw him in the car. She realized he thought that they were joking. The next thing is Mr. Boylston still refused. So once again, there's a reason why they did what they did. I became enraged, showing another reason. And the last thing I added is to show him just how serious we were. All of these are reasons why the characters in this story did what they did. I'm showing you why I, as Deborah Manning, did what I did, as well as the other Daughters of Liberty. All right, let's move on to the third category. I use transition words and phrases such as just then, suddenly, after a while, just to help the reader understand how much time went by. So the transition words and phrases that I added was, it all began when, just to um, kind of orient the reader to let them know this is where the beginning of the story begins, okay? It all began when. I also added just then, so another transition words that transition word that's kind of alerting the reader to where we are in the story. I also added suddenly, and then I added finally. So these are just transition words and phrases just to help the reader kind of keep up with where we are in the story. All right, so I want you to take a look at yours and see which transition words you, you use the first time see if they're okay, or if there's another transition word that could um, be a bit better, all right? And for the last category, I wrote sentences that vary in length and structure using commas to make them clear and correct. So let's take a look at that first sentence that's highlighted there in green. I said, it all began when we heard that Thomas Boylston, a merchant, was holding on to and overcharging for goods like coffee and sugar. And I actually added an extra two in there that shouldn't be there. Um, but here you can see I've expanded this sentence even more by giving a description of who Mr. Thomas Boylston is. Because in the beginning of my letter, this is the first time that I'm mentioning him. So my reader needs to know who Thomas Boylston is. 
So I've added in a comma and a description of who he is. I said a merchant. So once again, I'm varying my length. I'm, I'm expanding the sentence to make it a bit longer. I'm also structuring this sentence a bit uh, differently, okay? The second uh, sentence that I decided to vary in length and structure um, is the one that says, my friend, Betsy Warren, tried to peacefully resolve the situation. However, Mr. Boylston still refused. So I know that we've talked a lot about um, the transition word, however. And so here is an, a great example of using that word, however, in the middle of our sentence to show um, a change in direction, okay? The last sentence that I decided to vary in length and structure was the sentence that says, Betsy, comma, my great friend, unlocked the warehouse so that we could take the coffee back home to share with the other colonists. So I'm expanding it, I'm making it longer, but I'm also changing the structure just to kind of give my sentences some variety, okay? The very last category, oh, nope, that was the very last category, sorry. Um, so now, after going through those four categories, making our changes, here is our first draft that we went over on the first page, and now here is our final draft. So let's go ahead and read the final draft together to see how much better this sounds. All right, we said, Dear Diary, we have finally had enough. The Daughters of Liberty and myself decided to take a stand to show our support for freedom from Great Britain. It all began when we heard that Thomas Boylston, a great, sorry, a merchant, was holding on to and overcharging for goods like coffee and sugar. We were outraged at this because we knew that this wasn't fair to our fellow colonists. I knew something needed to be done. Just then, I decided to gather up the other Daughters of Liberty to march down to Mr. Boylston's warehouse and confront him about his, his unfairness. When we arrived outside of Mr. Boylston's warehouse, I shouted, we've come for some coffee. I could tell that he thought we were joking, so I demanded that he hand over his keys or we would break in. My friend, Betsy Warren, tried to peacefully resolve the situation. However, Mr. Boylston still refused. Suddenly, I became enraged and decided to take him by the neck and throw him in the cart to show him just how serious we were. Finally, Mr. Boylston gave up and threw his keys to the ground. Betsy, my great friend, unlocked the warehouse so that we could take the coffee back home to share with the other colonists. It felt so great to speak up for ourselves and stand up for what we believe in. I am very proud to be a daughter of liberty. Sincerely, Deborah Manning. So that's it guys. All right, so make sure that you guys are using your rubric to help um, make your writing a lot better, okay? Remember the process for um, a writer is never ending, okay? Uh, we've, we've written two drafts, but you're more than welcome to go back after your second draft and look at other parts of your rubric to see how you can even expand on what you expanded on the first time, all right? Um, I've also included some links to some um, other resources um, as far as websites just so you guys can get a bit more information about um, other um, women who have made great strides and made great history. Um, so make sure that you guys check out those website links as well in the description box. All right? All right, guys. See you later.